Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Israeli-born New York City jazz guitarist and composer Tomer Cohen. He opened up about the new 2023 album, Not the Same River. He was born in the U.S., but spent his childhood in the countryside in Israel. He picked up the guitar at a young age, and from that moment on, he knew that music was his pursuit in life. He studied jazz at the Israeli Conservatory of Music at Tel Aviv. After that, he was granted a scholarship from the New School of Jazz and Contemporary Music, then moved on to New York, where he graduated from the BFA Jazz Program. Over the years, he's steadily become a promising talent in New York City and beyond. Enjoy this interview. Thank you for taking a minute out for the program. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm really, really excited. Me too, man. So before we get in to your life and music, your latest album, Not the Same River, I want to know, you know, COVID really played on the musicians in the world in a very specific and exacting way. How did you survive COVID now that we're getting into this three-year mark, post-pandemic world is happening? How did you get through it? How, is, how has it changed the way that you do things now? I think, first of all, um, COVID, when COVID started, I was uh, in New York studying in, at a new school in, at the time. I just, I, I, I honestly just went back to Israel. You know, it was like a crazy situation, so I, I didn't really know what to expect, you know, how long and everything, and just decided to go home, you know, to be with the family in that time of that really felt like the world is crushing down. And I, after I, I came to Israel, I lived in the, in, the, in the kibbutz where I grew up, like in a small village in Israel for, mm, I would say, a few months, because in the beginning I was still in the, you know, in the mentality of, you know, give it a month or two, and then New York would come, it would come back, and I would just fly and move, uh, move back. And then I think when I realized that it will be a bit, a bit longer, I, you know, went to Tel Aviv. I had a, a good uh, situation there that I could live in a, in a good place, you know, and I, I could practice mostly all day, you know, doing some sound stuff at night. But um, also the new school wa- wa- was like uh, in Zoom. So, you know, I could wake up really early. I had like a year of that. I had like a schedule from 8 a.m. until 11 p.m., including, you know, time to what to eat or, or when, and really, I, you know, really dove deep into my compositions, my practice routine. I really, you know, I, I, I cal- calculate the time and it was like, like six years in New York or something I did in one year of just, you know, practicing and focusing. And uh, I think from that moment, I really, you know, also I finished the record in that, uh, in that time, you know, redoing some songs, finishing writing the other ones. And uh, so I think for me, I'm, um, in, in a way, quite lucky because it was a very, I, I had a good situation. Also, the family was safe. So that was also like the main main thing. And uh, and yeah, and after COVID, I just saw the, um, after after the, everybody got the shot. And I really saw that, I understand that that's the time that, that it will be cool to go back to New York. It, it was still shaky, but uh, I, I saw the progression in Israel and I could, predict that it will happen in the same in New York. So I moved back and it was, it was the right uh, time to move back. So uh, talk to me about the new album. You know, what's the title mean and what, what was it like to put this together? And especially to have it come out now with live shows picking up the world's in a, a newer and better place. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Um, first of all, the not the same river is a, is a record that um, it's, it's from part of a quote of Heraclitus that it's a Greek philosopher. And, and he says, no man ever steps in the same river twice, for he is not the same river, and he is not the same, not the same man. So I think this, this sentence, in a way, takes all of the compositions inside of the, like, he, he, like he is collecting all of the compositions. And my life philosophy is into this one, because, um, you know, I really believe that no matter what are we we're doing in one situation, you know, even even in COVID, because relating to that, you know, you cannot know what the situation would come, and you just need to accept it, and everything flows, you know. And either we knew in a bad moment or a good moment or in between, everything moves. And I think um, all of the composition has this sense. I really was, you know, it was really important to me that the music as well would have this reflective, half you know, quiet or more open vibe to it and I think uh, we did uh, we did okay on the record and um, and yeah I would say that's that's the main thing from uh, from the album so your roots are from Israel talk to me a little bit about how the jazz roots got into you growing up 
and how music became this passion that has turned into your life in New York. Yeah, so I I started uh, playing guitar, I would say unofficially in the age of 12, I think, and officially in the age of 13, because in, um, where I grew up in a small uh, village called Kibbutz, Kibbutz Gal Ed, and, and that's like a communist village, you know, so uh, the salaries go to the Kibbutz, they split it between everybody, uh, close to nature, like a small community. And there, you know, I had like a few friends that started to study guitar and it was so cool. And then, you know, we were playing Zeppelin and Metallica and like some old rock and metal and stuff like that. So first they, you know, I would always ask them, you know, to teach me a small part of this song and a small part of this song, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Until a year later, when I was 13 in the eighth grade, eighth, yeah, eighth grade. And then I said, okay, I want you know, to go to a teacher. It was funny because I was starting to, to, like, to play old folk uh, Israeli music. I would never practice it. I would always, you know, he would give me the homework. I would go to the stuff that I wanted uh, to learn uh, in that time. And I continue. And then I moved to an electric guitar. And I think during... And those years, up to uh, I was in the 11th grade, you know, doing some music conventions, some uh, ensembles, some rock ensembles, some jazz ensembles, and I really realized that, okay, maybe maybe that's what I really want uh, to do. And then continuing, you know, uh, I after the school, you go to the army in Israel. I was lucky enough to go to, I, did, I didn't be a musician on the army, but they let me to study in the background, so I did two years in the Israeli Conservatory of Music in Tel Aviv. Afterward, afterwards, I got accepted to the, to the New School and Israel program. We have like a two years that we're doing in, the, in Israel. And then the New School would come, do auditions. If they're interested, they give scholarships. And then you can move to New York to finish your studies. So I was lucky enough to get the scholarship. I moved to New York and, uh, you know, graduated from the New School. And and I think, in a way, you know, did a record and everything, and we did some some tours and everything. But that's from the beginning up to now. Shortly, I would say. So you obviously have a, a drive, a fire, a passion for what you do, and there's different aspects of it, from recording to playing live to everything that goes into being a musician. But what is it that you like the best about being a professional musician? Hmm. Good question. I think I really. I can separate it into a few things. Like, first of all, I really like to create. I really realize that, you know, during even even in COVID and even, the, you know, that we have some time in between, it's like, you know, creating music is something that it's so special to me. And I would, you know, I think I will always get excited and driven by that, you know, to discover more about yourself, about the music and, and you know, just dive deeper in, in stuff that uh, that you like. But on the other hand, I really like to, to play live because in you know in a way if you're playing live and it's improvised it's in a way you're creating on the spot so it's still from the same root of creation but also you know feeling energy of, of crowd meeting new people you know around the world it's been you know amazing to dis discover like um, everything through the through the sunglasses of uh, of music you know through the glasses of music just seeing the world in a from that aspect and, you know, be able to feel a room to connect to that energy. And I think, um, I think it's in a way, you know, it's get, going deeper and deeper, but it's all, always for me is like creation and being, you know, in, in the moment. And I think our, both of them are from the same thing, you know, it's one thing to write music, but you always need to be in the moment when you're writing music as well as you need to be in the moment when you're playing live. And I think when those moments are really deep, deep and all of the band is at it, it's just, you know, an un unbelievable feeling that, in a way, I feel that we always pursue when we're playing. So, you know, coming to New York is a pretty big deal. And, you know, I mean, even as somebody that has grown up in the States, you know, I mean, I'd be speckled by this being like the, the place for jazz in the world. But you coming here from Israel, what? stage do you play on where you had to almost pinch yourself and think, wow, this is happening? Yeah, I think, I think in a way, um, since, first of all, it was a big shock, you know, to coming here from, you know, I lived in Tel Aviv before in, in the kibbutz, but it's, you know, it's nothing like New York, you know, the building, the energy, it, it was, you know, it was insane. I, I heard people before I came to New York that would tell me, yeah, you will feel the energy of the city and, you know, stuff like that. And I was th thinking, 
you know, what, what do you mean energy of a city? You know, how, how you can really feel something like that? On the first, you know, hour or two when I just arrived to New York, just came out of the, of the subway station, you know, and then it's like, whoa, that's the, you know, that's the, that's the energy. But uh, for me, you know, I knew that I want to go to New York. I knew in the first moment that I got accepted to the new school program, you know, I had my belief that I can, you know, that I can do it, that I can, you know, be able with the scholarships and, and all of the things around uh, to, to make it. But I was really driven to, you know, to be the best I can, that I would be as prepared as I can to go when I have the opportunity. And lucky, lucky enough, uh, I could do it. So what was the first live jazz show you ever saw that really inspired you? Ooh. Ah, it's, it's hard. I, I, have, I have a few, you know, that first of all, in New York, is most of the shows are, are like that. But um, I think for me, it was as, uh, the first moment that I, that you asked. Uh, I I can hear. I don't on, honestly, I don't remember who played there. But when I when I just I think before the army or on in the beginning of it, when I was really you know staying to myself, that's the time to really get at it, you know, and do everything properly. So I went to like um, to hear I think a live uh, performance of the program of the new school that people would show you know and I was so excited to see you know people playing jazz because it, it's 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 common in Israel but it's not that much and that moment was very powerful to me to see it's like I really remember telling myself that's where I want to be you know that kind of music that kind of stages that kind of, of stuff like that but uh, on the other hand if if you would say in New York you know you had I had so you know seeing Frizzell's trio was you know it's always like an inspiration and all of the musicians here that you know the people that I could listen to on records and then you can you know you can see them clo close to you you can I can really hear them think and react you know that's unbelievable. So if you could get into a time machine and go back in time and see any musician any jazz musician who would you love go who would you love to go see and witness live? First of all, I would say Coltrane. And that's the first one that comes to to my mind, and and yeah, honestly, I would say I would love to go to you know maybe maybe forties or fifties or something like that, or even you know even Miles with his uh, quartet. But I I think I would really want to experience the city in that age, you know, uh, in a way to because. Of course, now the city is it's still New York, and it's you know been born here, and it's really you know that's that's the place to be for for that kind of music. But I think you know every, things has been changed a bit, and it would be very interesting to to be able to see you know the life routine and uh, and how it was actually back in the day. But musicians to 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 hear, I would say, yeah, Coltrane just to feel him on stage. I think it's like unbelievable, and sees you know, Miles and from that from that area would be would be amazing and west maybe as well so everyone out there has a perception of you your family your friends your fans but ultimately you live your life what's your perception of you who do you think you are myself that's a hard question mm. i would say about myself if i if i can look about myself in the you know from a different angle i can i can say that maybe uh, very driven and that's a that's a hard question, you know. I don't really know what to to answer. Um, yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe that, even, yeah, sorry. Maybe that's the answer. You know, it's a hard question, and that's yeah. the answer in itself. You know. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So, if anyone out there wants to get the new album, find out any anything about shows, anything pertaining to your world, where's the best place for them to go? Say my website or my uh, Instagram. My website is uh, music dot com or on Instagram is tomercohen forty six and uh, with, with a number in the end of it. And uh, yeah, I'm you know on Instagram I'm quite active. Uh, we have all of the latest uh, updates and press and everything on the record on the um, on the website. And you can also like um, you know subscribe to be a follower on the on the email chain as well. But I would say website and Instagram that's the the best uh, places. Wonderful, man. This has been great. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for giving me your story to talk about the album. I really appreciate it. Um, good luck with everything as we move forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And have a great uh, weekend.
Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players and minds in Israel, New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Toma for his time, music, and cool. If you want to hear more interviews, you can find Neon Jazz archived interviews on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube, and everything Neon Jazz can be found at the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.